Warning, if you're easily creeped out by creepy things, you may not want to watch this creepy list of creepy flicks featuring creepy creeps. Film! From the weird to the funny, foreign to indie, 2020 was a year of horror. In more ways than one. This isn't a typical horror movie list though. We are going by the definition of creepy. So an unpleasant feeling of fear or unease. Here are my top 10 creepy films from the year that was. Number 10, Bad Hair. You know, in some parts of India, a woman's hair is her most prized possession. I had no idea this is what some women go through. It hurts my head just thinking about getting a weave now, let alone one that starts to have a mind of its own. This happens to Anna in this kind of twisted version of The Devil Wears Prada. Trying to fit in, her new hair seemingly starts to take a life of its own. I also find the status symbol associated with straight hair quite disturbing. Not only creepy, but this one was educational for me. Number nine, one burr or one bedroom. What brought you to LA? Trying to start a new life. Missed one here. Any pets? Nope. What's creepier than a cult? Sorry, Scientologists and Nivixum Nixum people. It's a little unsettling. Back to the movie though. It's mysterious and the tension is palpable. Sarah is an aspiring costume designer who moves into a one bedroom apartment complex in Los Angeles and then... Number eight. Black Bear. This starts out like a dark version of One Cut of the Dead, which is one of my favorite movies from 2019. You're awesome. Yeah. You're Gabe. Hi. But its trajectory brings it someplace different, thoughtful and, and very dark. A couple hosts Audrey Plaza's character who plays an actress slash filmmaker and reality gets a bit blurry as they all sort of contrive a game of jealousy and manipulation. Number seven, The Rental. I should have brought the telescope. What do you need a telescope in the city for? Unless you're like a peeping Tom or something. Directed by Dave Franco and starring Alison Brie, this is more thriller than horror, but still high on the creep factor. Two couples basically Airbnb a spot and have peculiar interactions with the homeowner. Carly! Tell me that's not a camera. By the way, what's up with funny people having all this like darkness inside them? I guess it's more evidence that light and dark remain closely parallel. So profound. Why, thank you. Did that just happen? Number six, Promising Young Woman. What are you doing? It's okay, hey, you're safe. What are you doing? Hey, I said, what are you doing? It must be a scary and creepy world for you females. To see how women can be taken advantage of is made even more effective in this film by the male casting choices. Uh, Carrie Mulligan shines as Nina, who was raped by a classmate in med school and she becomes a vigilante of sorts, going out at night, pretending to be drunk, and waiting for the next nice guy to help her home. Number five, The Invisible Man. He said that wherever I went, he would find me, walk right up to me, and I wouldn't be able to see him. Adrian is dead. He's not dead. I was a fan of Hollow Man, and The Invisible Man is equally creepy about being stalked by an unseen figure and modernizes it. I don't know what it's like to be a woman, no matter how hard I try, uh, but y'all have to deal with a lot. He said that I could never leave him. He controlled how I looked and what I wore. Number four, host. I've never done this over Zoom. 2020 brought us further into the virtual world than we had ever been. Zoom is now a regular part of many people's lives, and never had I thought it could get this creepy. Like the Unfriended series before it, host takes place basically on a computer screen, six friends meet on Zoom, and one of them invites a medium. After you watch it, you might start paying more attention to what's behind you. <laughs> Number three, his house. We are good people. Whether or not you're good people, it's not me that needs convincing. This is a great film with depth and horror on many levels. A Sudanese refugee couple are granted asylum in Britain and granted housing. Being an outsider is already difficult, made worse by racism and pressure to assimilate. And that's just the beginning of this film. All this couple wants to do is be accepted and be comfortable in their own home and neighborhood. The movie's visually arresting and its haunting message 
is lasting. Number two, Relic. Since your grandfather passed, this house seems unfamiliar. Who are you talking to? This movie is the definition of creepy. It centers around three generations of women where the mother and daughter find grandma just a little bit off. Her condition worsens. Is it something supernatural? Is it age-related decline? I won't answer that, but the ending has so much meaning behind some of the most disturbing images I have seen that still refuses to leave me today. You should watch it. Enjoy! Number one, Vivarium. Welcome to Yonder, a wonderful development. It has all you'd need and all you'd want. I loved this movie. I'm a fan of Imogen Pot, so that's a plus. It's warped, mysterious, and I'd be more frightened in this world than many creature features. First of all, any planned neighborhood with identical housing is already a bit creepy. Being unable to leave obviously skyrockets the creep factor. This is what happens to characters Tom and Gemma, who just wanted to buy a house together. Beyond that, the less said, the better. If you made it this far, congratulations, you creep. Come on. Just kidding. <laughs> who am I to judge? This is my list. I watched all these damn movies. And I did it for you. And now you won't like and subscribe? Why? Why won't you like and subscribe? Shit. Now I sound like all the men in Wonder Woman 1984. That's a creepy movie too.